And I remember a time so many years ago when I was not, um, I'd probably been born again like two or three years. I went and read a book by a man and um, what, what he was teaching at the time, and he saw, you know, at the time it was such a revolutionary thing. But now there's nothing, you know, new about it. We've had it over and over again. But man, it really, really transformed my life. Because he taught, he was teaching about the, the practice of the presence of God, practicing the presence of God. And now you know. Uh, we're coming from a time where um, you have all these night prayers. Actually, you used to have night prayer Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And so you pray, pray, pray. Then there's the, there was the religious you know, aspect to it. We know that uh, there are segments where God is involved, and other segments it's me time. Eh? So, like, God is supposed to be somewhere. Then this man, he, he, I, you're so about how, I don't know, this thing is malfunctioning. He was talking about how he learned how to practice the presence of God by just consciously keeping in his mind that the Spirit of God is sitting next to him every other time. So when you talk to him, he would have this picture in his mind as if he had said, when he was in his car, he would have this picture like there's somebody sitting on the passenger seat. So he's talking to him as if he's there. And he's there but the difference is you actually see him there you understand and you practice that thing of speaking to him and he's there and he says when he did that for some time he became so conscious of the presence of god that it was something um like all the time you have this thing that the spirit of god is walking right beside me and um I can speak to him anytime and he can speak to me anytime. I said, now I'm going to practice doing this. So of course I had no car to drive and the Spirit of God is seated in the passenger seat. So I just made him walk with me. And uh, would walk some distances. Eh? Man, I must have tired him out. <laughs> because we would walk distances and it, it, and it was never a problem. You know, I don't know why walking these days people have a problem. I mean young people. Forget about people my age, I'm talking about young people. Because that time, all you needed were sneakers. Of course, after a few months, they would be smelling, but that's okay. And uh, some jeans and a t-shirt, and you're good to go. You're here, they tell you somebody's in Tinder, you say, I'm coming. <laughs> so you walk. So now, there used to be, um, <laughs> you know, the late Apostle Walabi Kubo. They used to have conferences there at prayer palace in Chibuya all the time. And, um, and I used to say the other side of town, but that wasn't a problem. Actually, the only problem would be if I'm hungry. And that would be almost all. Right? But if I had if I'd eaten some chapatis and some, I was good to go. <laughs> like, I would just walk across, go there, spend the whole day. And man, there's nothing as good as chapati, by the way. God bless the person who brought you up. You eat once and you're sorted for the day. You get two thick ones like this, roll them, eh? roll them like they, they didn't even have to have eggs, eh? just the nano, eh? and dismiss them. Eh? And then take some tea and uh, roll, and then walk, and make the Holy Spirit walk with you. Eh? So you're walking, walking, but actually you're walking with Him. and and you're speaking to him and you're so happy and like he's you really start seeing and in your mind you're really seeing like somebody walking right next to you at the at the beginning you look foolish you understand eh? but after some time you start actually having a, this consciousness that he's walking next to me now the trouble is of course uh we had issues with our theology so when you do something let's say um i had issues sometimes with blowing my head eh? So somebody annoys you, eh? and then you unleash eh? some serious eh? rant. <laughs> you unleash a weekly rant. Eh? Now, when you're through, now you're convinced the Spirit of God has departed. 
and yet he's right there. <laughs> so now you're convinced the guy has gone. So now you have to go and do what? And uh, yeah, beg him to please come back. I still need you. But then now when you're convinced he has gone, then you say, okay, now let me just walk alone. Then you're walking alone, then he tells you something very profound. At that time, when you think you are the least deserving, now for him he tells you something very, very powerful. Then you're like, wow, he's still here. But I still, I do, I, I, I'm not yet worthy to speak to him. Okay, for him he can speak to me because he's holy. But me, let me first go and get holy. Then I can speak to him, praise the Lord. But then of course, because of the wrong theology concerning, we didn't know about the grace of God. So you knew every time you made a mistake, you have to start again. The guy is pissed. So you have to start at what? You have to start all over again. Now that's why, when we first started understanding the message of grace, while other people were saying um, all sorts of things, it was such a relief to know that they can actually make a mistake and the Spirit of God is right there. He's not going anywhere. He's right there, and even right after blasting somebody to pieces, I can turn and tell him, Lord, I love you so much. <laughs> and he says, I love you too. <laughs> but go and apologize to that guy. Anyhow, now here's the thing. The difference between the reality of this in your life and it just being some scripture is actually the practice of the presence of God. That thing I was telling you, being constantly conscious that God is with me. Now that we know that you cannot even do something which you'd call of a sinful nature and he goes away, so why would you want him away? Praise the Lord. He's not going to go away anyway unless you reject Jesus Christ. So why not practice the presence of God and know God is with me and in every place you go, you have that thing in your mind and you know it and at, at the beginning, you have to constantly remind yourself, remind yourself, remind yourself that this is who I am and the, I, I, the, I'm a priest. The presence of God is right here with me, moving with me. So I expect every place I go, I bring the presence of God with me and that place is flooded with the presence of God because I am there.